morning, members. Uh, we have a short agenda of business this morning, and I can see all these doorstep tans trying to get back out, so we'll do this as effectively as possible. Rona, have we said any apologies, please? Yeah, thank you, Leader. We have apologies from Councillors McGregor and McClung. Okay, members, any declarations of interest? No? Item 3, which is a minute of meeting the 25th of February. This is for approval. I'll move. Happy a second. Okay, moving on to item 4, which is uh, this support asks members to, to review fees for a range of non-liquor licensing activities and sets out recommended increases. In the report, members are provided with information on the construct of fees and recommendations on certain increases. The report highlights the position of our fees in comparison to other local authorities in Scotland at paragraph 3.14. We have Sharon Hines here um, to answer any questions arising from the report. Members? Ivor? Chair, just in line with the recommendation there that the fees should be agreed as Appendix 1, uh, I take it it's a printing error that we're not actually going to charge £1,074 for a private hire driver. I thought we could slip that through. We're trying to make money, however. Sure. Um, Yeah, if there's no one else, I'd move the recommendation. Okay. Um, thank you. Can we approve? Thank you. Item five. Um, this is this support asks members to review and agree the maximum fair structure for taxes in Dumfries and Galway and to fix a date from which the new structure will come into effect. As a licensing authority, we are required to review our maximum fair structure at least every 18 months and the last review took place on the 1st of November 2014. Officers are recommending adoption of the current structure and have highlighted the process to bring this decision into effect from the 1st of July. I'm always here to answer any questions. Members? No? Can we go to the recommendations? Can we agree one and two? Thank you. I am, I am six, which is the smoke-free policy. This support asks members to approve the smoke-free policy, which replaces the existing tobacco control pol policy, which was introduced in 2006. Members will recall that we were provided with a development report in November 2015, where we considered the Scottish government's objectives in their tobacco control strategy and which made recommendations for all local authorities to extend smoking restrictions. The policy presented reflects the decisions we took in November 2015 when we endorsed the action plan to enable development of this policy focused on the objectives of prevention, protection and cessation. Paul is here to answer any questions. Members? Stephen? Thank you, Leader. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a, a wee issue just in terms of the clarification around uh, being requested to refrain and smoking being prohibited. So there's a couple of points where, um, so, okay, paragraph 3.5 references the associated connecting path. And I think this will be very much down to which building and which location and which site, etc., and what the surroundings are like. But I think it's just to get a wee bit of consistency between where it's prohibited, say, at the entrance of all buildings, for example, and where uh, staff are, are requested to refrain from, because obviously around this building, for example, there'll be paths where people will be walking by smoking, you know, just normally, and you can't really enforce anything. So I think it's really, um, particularly that paragraph 3.5, and in the appendixes, appendices, 1.3 says that smokers are requested to refrain from smoking in the surrounding grounds, and Appendix 2, 3.2 says smokers are prohibited from smoking on pathways. So it's prohibited and requested to 
re refrain of a slightly different um, weight, I would suggest. So how could that be meaningfully enforced? And is there a safe option that just keeps it to prohibit it at entrances where it's obvious? And then if there's pathways round about, well, it's more of a question of discretion. It's really just to tease that out to understand it better. OK, I'm not sure whether that just um, relates to staff, because you've done to have it, I suppose. But. Uh, leader, the, the, the use of prohibited and refrain um, were, were interchanged as a result of some of the consultation. I'll just tidy up the language there to make it very clear and expressly clear where it's prohibited and where it's refrained, just so that, that people know. We're also to do some uh, work in terms of communications to roll out in, uh, part of the implementation plan, and I'll make sure that all the language is a good bit tighter there. OK, so. Thank you. No, I welcome that. Um, I think, though, then that raises the question of if uh, members of the public are prohibited um, and what, how that would be enforced. Understandably, with staff, it's up to managers to, to talk to staff and engage sensitively um, and respectfully, etc. But I think with members of the public, if you're prohibiting something on public grounds, that's a different matter. Leader, I think the, the prohibited refers to where the legislation says that the, in law it's prohibited and, and we would restrict it to that. Otherwise, it would be would be refrained and we would restrict areas around the entrances and enclosures of buildings because what we're seeking to do is to, to extend it to those to those places around entrances to uh, prevent uh, staff from being subject to uh, passive smoking. So the refrain part is non-enforceable? We, we've difficulty actually enforcing that, um, but we're uh, trying to uh, comply with the Scottish Government's guidelines in terms of a strategy in order to actually uh, actually start to make sure that the individual see. Um, we obviously can't apply uh, enforcement action, and any enforcement action would be as a result of intervention by environmental health uh, enforcement officers who are able to apply fines. So, so you can what it finds in on the pathways uh, not in the pathways that, no. that refers more to buildings yeah. where because it is a, it is a guideline isn't it yes it's, yes it's, it's a guideline Ab absolutely what's your first name john yeah i i just i just have a problem with this because i i'm, I'm all in favor of um i mean i think it's good policy that we don't have a smoking policy and that buildings and all the rest of it but you know if you can't enforce something, what's the point in setting it up? And I think it's a guidance, and I think the guidance should be that, you know, please refrain from smoking, but prohibit. I mean, <laughs> it's so draconian, and it can't be. What's, what's the point if you're not going to be able to enforce it and nobody's going to want to enforce it? Um, that I think it's a tick box exercise, if I'm being perfectly honest, and I don't think it's a very good one. I think it uh, I think we could be less prescriptive and a little bit more just a applying a sort of, yes, please refrain from smoking here um, and I understand it absolutely in the buildings that it is not allowed, but I think everybody knows that. So you're kind of, I, I just think this is, I don't think this is a good way of going forward. I think it's a good strategy, the way it's set out here, if I'm being perfectly honest. And if you can't enforce it, if you're setting up something to fail. It is an exactly the same point. I mean, the cost implication of putting up the sign for the council is close to six thousand pounds, according to this. Um, so, if we're spending thirty-six thousand pounds to put up signs, but then we can't actually enforce anything to do with those signs, you know, is it really good use of money to do that? I, I, I mean, it is a guideline; it's not a legislation. I, I, I'm just not sure we should be doing it at all. I think it is a perception and how the council uh, portrays itself in public and, and how you want to be looked at. You know, you want to be encouraging people not to smoke. I think that's the whole aspect of it. But you're absolutely right about the, whether, it's, whether it can be enforced or not. But. Yep. Um, if I could just respond to Patsy's point, obviously about um, enforcing um, the obviously the tobacco control strategy aims to denormalise smoking and it's about protection, prevention, and cessation. Our aim here is to actually encourage our workforce within the council to become more healthier. We're aiming towards gold award for healthy working lives. 
and we feel that we would be able, obviously, to maintain and actually monitor our workforce more um, through, obviously, extending the smoke smoking ban to include entrances. So we are actually, will hopefully be looking to discourage smoking during the working day for our workforce, and that's where our aims in terms of HR practices come in to support, obviously, those that want to smoke. Um, I can absolutely understand. I get discouraged, absolutely. You know, refrain, yes. Prohibit, no. We can't enforce it. And it's not the right thing to be doing. It's a choice. It's a lifestyle choice people take. And we must be careful that we don't become a dictatorship of what we can and cannot do. You'd be saying, can't have a pack of crisps. It's not good for you. You know, where do you, where's it end? Um, and I just think we should just step back. I don't think this is a good strategy. I don't think it's a good way forward. And we may be wanting a gold award for something, but if I'm being perfectly honest, who cares? Jill? Mm. Well, as an ex-smoker myself from a number of years back, um, I can fully understand why we want to try and encourage people not to smoke uh, for all sorts of good health and welfare reasons. And I quite appreciate that. But here we've been asked to do something where we can't actually enforce um, anything. And that, that's where I'm coming from. And if I was being brutally honest, and some members in here are probably going to shoot me down in flames for this, but if we walk into this council building, main council building, we have a smoking area right at the front door. All our visitors walk past that smoking area. And, and that is... That is not just councillors, but other people as well. I mean, if you're going to try and do something about it, then move the smoking area to a more reasonable location. Shouldn't be allowing people to smoke at the front door. But we can't prohibit. We can't prohibit it because it's not enforceable. I think you know that's that's what this is. The aim of this is to do away with smoking areas altogether. And you know, if the staff are wanting to have a smoke, they smoke in their own time outside the area. I, Chair, I don't think I, I don't think we can do that. We can't enforce staff. I mean, I think legislation stipulates that if you've got a smoker in your premises and in your workforce, and they're entitled to have a smoke break, and we need to provide a facility for that and somewhere, somewhere for them to go. I don't think I don't think that's right, and I'll be corrected on that. I think it's you know, the working day is a working day, and the uh, management can enforce that working day as they see fit. They've allowed it in the past for allowing people to go out for a smoke, but they can also take that away, I think. Paul? We do the, the um, employees don't actually have any right to smoke whatsoever within the working day, nor do they actually have a uh, reason to, to take a, a break. So what we're trying to do is we are trying to restrict um, smoking outside entrances. So what we, we've got an option here, I suppose, we can actually just move the smokers away from the entrances to, to actually protect others from uh, harm from smoke. But uh, they're only really entitled to have statutory breaks. That's lunchtime and where they're working, uh, where they work for more than four hours at a time. Uh, culturally within the council and other employers, we've allowed staff to smoke and, and part of that is to rein that back in by uh, asking them to refrain from smoking except during statutory and other uh, breaks uh, to draw back that entitlement. Part of, part of this um, legislation is to protect children as well. But there are other options uh, within the paper to look at, but it doesn't actually, um, you know, if it would set one criteria to me, it would set one criteria in one area, like leisure museums and libraries, and another criteria for other Areas, whereas you're trying to get a consistent message from the council about you know, encouraging people and helping and supporting people, uh, staff and that, not to smoke. And I'm not, I'm not a smoker, but you know. anyway. Ira. Chair, when it says paths and walkways, does that mean pavement? Because if I'm a smoker, what have we got to be faced with coming in here at nine o'clock in the morning? A picket line of smokers along the front there, right, that's me finished. I step across the line and I'm now in a non-smoking area. Now, depending on what way the wind's blowing, it might be more beneficial me standing in the actual area whereby it's blowing the smoke out than standing out where it's blowing the smoke in. This is the ridiculousness. 
of what's being proposed here. We've got the fact that we can't police it. We haven't got the money, I don't think, to put the signs up because there's better things we could be doing. There's plenty of potholes and things in the road that people would rather see filled. Um, and the thing is, we could be driving people onto the pavement where there's more children who will be affected by the smoke. I'm, I'm glad this is, we're having this discussion about a policy we've already agreed but in November, but, but I don't know what, you know, however you want to take that forward. Chair, what we've tried to do is uh, working on the, the terms of reference, and that's the reason that we, we brought the report in November. We realise this is a, a very sensitive issue. We realise that we have limitations in what we can do as far as report enforcing non-legislative uh, powers in, in that we're trying to provide a, a space around the entrances where we can protect our staff and other visitors from, from the harm of smoke. Clearly, the, the, the limitations in legislation are within workplaces and within buildings, and those are enforceable by fine. We understand the logistics, but those will be worked through on a, a, a property by property basis. And the reason for the signs is simply to inform people of what the rules are. And we're, we're going to work constructively with our staff and, and, and with any members who wish to stop smoking to work through that process to see whether, in fact, we can, we can help them for good and sound health reasons. As it happens, we're working towards, we've, we've currently got silver, healthy working lives and working towards gold. And actually, that's an integral part of what we need to do in order to achieve that next level. I think we're doing it for all the right reasons, but in writing the report, we were well aware of the, both the sensitivities and limitations, and we've tried to frame the report in accordance with the draft report we, we brought to you in November, which agreed certain principles within which we could work. Um, Peter. Thank you, Chair. Having been a prop smoker in the past, uh, I think the last person you're going to uh, listen to to ask you to give up smoking is your employer. Um, I, I think um, if someone wants to carry on smoking, they will smoke, and they, if we don't provide a facility for them, they will find somewhere else to smoke. And that could be dangerous. Having run textile factories in the past, you know, I was much preferred to know where my smokers were smoking rather than not. Um, and I think the, the, the 36K that we're proposing for signs is a total waste of money. I think it'd be much better put into facilities that are away from the entrances. Jim. Thanks, Leader. I can understand the restriction in the vicinity of entrances to buildings. But what is the status of council-owned car park? in the vicinity of our building. We would, we would consider them to, to have the same status because we, what we're trying to do is, is to actually present, prevent the entrances and, and pathways that lead up to entrances to buildings, which is predominantly where you find most smokers. And the reason for that is just simply to define a safe area where people can enter and leave buildings safely. Um, there is another option in terms of taking the, uh, the smokers away from, um, from walkways. And if members are minded, we could actually establish areas where people don't have to pass through those areas in order to access our buildings and still achieve the same objectives. That was actually part of the, uh, the building by buildings approach. So that we look at what the challenges are and we try to work through with, with lead tenants to, to again uh, provide the same protection. Sean? Yeah, can I just ask if sorry, we Sorry, sorry, Sean, that's uh, I'll let Jim back in just a second. But what about the situation where the public are walking through the car park? Or the public may require to use the car parks to access the building? I think you're still be allowed to smoke there. Isn't it? Basically, it, 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 it's the pathways in the, in the building. No, it's something that we can do. Can I just ask what the current status is with regards to smoking shelters on council property? Do we have any or you know, how many there are? We've got, we've got very limited smoking shelters available because generally at the moment the uh, smoking in, in the boxes are actually centred around entrances to buildings, which is probably the wrong thing to have done looking back. Um, so what we would do is we would try to take that away and, and we could 
established areas, remote residential areas, and still provide uh, the option for people to smoke at a distance. Um, but what we're also trying to do via the report is to um, encourage our staff to only smoke during uh, proper breaks. At the moment, there, there's actually a, a collection of staff around entrance at various times of the day, and obviously uh, members of the public and other visitors are, are having to actually walk through that. So, so we're trying to achieve two objectives here. The, the actual car parks are not covered by the legislation in the same way as they are for the NHS, but we're trying to actually bring in those principles, so we're applying principles as close as we can to, because local authorities in the back of the legislation uh, through the Scottish Government's uh, smoking uh, strategy have been asked to review their arrangements to review their smoking policies, and that's in fact why we're bringing these, these uh, reports to you. Jane? Um, if I've got this right, um, I, I sort of bristled when I first read about 36,000 pounds for signs, um, list of building issues and all the rest of it. Um, but the legislation, I think, requires that we stick up signs. I think that's one of the things that, uh, according to this paper here, we're actually obliged to have signs. Um, and, and while I have a certain sympathy with the conservative view um, on um, people being free to kill themselves if they want, I think we've got a duty as uh, an employer uh, to help them not do that. Um, and um, I, I, I do have, have, have sympathy with um, the, the, the freedom of action. But nevertheless, um, we're trying to persuade people, to nudge people, and to help people, because that's about this, this here. We're, we're giving people time off to, um, to go and try and deal with a habit um, and to improve their health. Um, and um, I think we should take an incremental um, approach to this on a building by building basis. I think we should minimize the sign expenditure, absolutely minimize. I think it should be based on um, um, you know, something that can be moved around and that probably some plastic signs, something absolutely minimal, um, and, and just basically try to persuade people to change their habits. Um, we've taken a, uh, a decision on a policy, as you've said, Leader, and I would suggest that we actually accept this with the provisos um, on reducing costs as far as possible. Jeff? <coughs> the NHS <coughs> has had this policy in place for some time now. I don't know how long that is. Have we had any feedback about what they've done, how well it's working, and what lessons can be learned from that, rather than starting from uh, ground zero? The, the, um, there are some challenges with the NHS, even though they can rely on, on legislation to prohibit smoking within their grounds. However, um, it's fair to say that they view this as having a, a positive impact in that it, it's working towards reducing it. And I think that's what we're also trying to achieve as an employer, both to support our employees and members to, to quit or reduce, and also to protect anyone having to visit uh, council premises in, in in the same way as the NHS and the legislation that was framed by the Scottish Government to achieve that. Okay, I'm going to go to the recommendations and if people want to come in, uh, and any of them? Sorry? Oh, Stephen. Thanks. I've been listening to the debate. Um, I can see the sense in uh, restricting at least from a point of view that it can be managed, uh, smoking at entrances to buildings. I think that's <coughs> eminently sensible. There's a lot of people going in and out of buildings, <coughs> and it doesn't present the best image of the council if uh, there's people smoking there in an area that we can reasonably control and manage. However, I think whenever we extend it beyond, beyond that to um, all council property, pathways, all the rest of it, it just ceases to be either enforceable, practical, or even... Um, conducive to good relations with uh, members of the public, I feel. So I think if we can maybe start small, focus on what we can control that's reasonable um, and keeps a sort of smoke-free environment at doorways, etc., cetera, um, and then maybe learn from that and look, look beyond that as time goes on. But I think, I mean, there's, there's a smoking shelter at the Garrick, um, well away from the, the entrance. That doesn't stop people actually smoking there, but there is a provision there for members of staff that takes them away from the public face of the or public doorway to the council building. So that seems like a reasonable 
first approach rather than trying to do this blanket approach straight away. I don't know if that's in line with what other members think, but I would suggest we could amend it accordingly to start small and then grow from there. So what you're saying is the door base first, but I don't know how practical uh, that would be because some of the doorways are on the pathways as well. Uh, you know, and, and how would you actually make, make that work? For example, like the building at the back there, there's doorways and the pathways right next to the door. Where they actually stand at the moment, but that's the doorway under pathway. But Paul? Chair, that's actually why we've uh, imploded the, the pathways. The entrances are, are pr provide as much risk as, as the actual doorways. The shelter at Garrett is probably the exception, but we didn't bring a report that was proposing a lot of shelters because, again, that would, would be really expensive. Um, the signage, as uh, Councillor Maitland has, has indicated, is actually part of the process and we're required to display signage um, in order to let people know where they can and can't smoke. The actual cost of, of the signage is, is fairly minimal. The signs actually only cost £11.79, but it's fitting another cost that actually adds to, adds to the whole bill. We've got a total number of properties of around 207, and, and the number of those frequented by children we estimate to be approximately 124. We have actually scoped all this out. We've also proposed a, a, an implementation plan that runs up to June, recognising that we need to do a, a whole series of things in order to, to make this happen. Uh, I'd be quite happy to, to look at taking that forward on a staged basis. Um, but obviously, you know, w we want to stick by the principles as far as, as far as we possibly can to achieve the outcomes, both in terms of staff health and obviously protect any visitors to the premises. So you're saying we could go through a stage process? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't want to bring anybody else back in either. Chair, yeah. just if we are banning them from the entrances, could you just explain to me, because I'm quite short of reading the proposal, what happens at 118 English Street? Pavement fence. Do we, is it banned on that pavement? Municipal chambers entrances to the pavement. You know, you've got a lot of buildings that are on the pavement. Are we going to put signs on frontages of the building from that end of the building that you can't smoke? I think I think that's part of the point I was trying to make. It's with it, it'd be difficult to you know separate the two, but you've got. Uh, I would take it it's the council boundaries, whereas a. a Public pavement is now a council boundary. Chair, the, the idea there, uh, given the example of 118 English Street, would obviously be to protect the entrance. If that happens to be on a pavement, we'd put signage up and we try and enforce that as best we can. We certainly wouldn't have staff doing it outside that building, so that would limit the staff. And if we were put into a, a shelter or some area where they could, uh, they, they could smoke elsewhere, we could do that at the back of the car park for that particular building. We'd, we'd, pick, we'd pick that as a way forward. This, is, this to me, is getting very messy, this. It, you know, it, I think it would you know, grow arms and legs. You could have shelters all over the bit. And, uh, I'm not bringing anybody else, anybody else in. I'm, I'm going to the recommendations. And as I said, if you want to... Um, amend the recommendations, please feel free to put a, an amendment forward. We've considered one, and I will ask to approve the new smoke-free policy and procedure. Anybody? Okay. Patsy, you want to change um, that? Yeah, I, I, I would say that we do not agree with the implementation plan because it is non-enforceable. We should be encouraging um, members of staff through other means, not, not signage, not prohibitive notices, and that um, it is a policy that cannot be implemented or enforced and therefore shouldn't be wasting money or we should not be spending any money on trying to happen. Okay, uh, Peter? I'll second that. Okay, Ted? Um, I mean, this we have a policy in the council and we're trying to actually protect staff and show a good image to the public so my 
my amendment would be that we go with the recommendation of as as well. Seconder. Okay. It's really just um, on two point three. I think there's two options uh, given on on the signage um, based on three point ten. So I just wondered. It's a that was for during the debate. You could either have the twenty two thousand option, which is the libraries, museums, and leisure uh, facilities, or you can go the home work, which is thirty six thousand. So if you can uh, you can interchange that whatever, but there is a motion there for do not agree the recommendations, or and there's an amendment to agree the recommendations. Stephen? I'm just wondering if it's wise to me suggest a counter amendment then. Because in principle, I do agree that we should be a smoke free employer where possible and encourage people to cease if they can, even though I am a smoker myself. But however, I'd rather amend the implementation plan uh, rather than abandon it completely. Um, and I think it should be focused on the entrances and where so far as reasonably practical, where there's a pathway at the entrance, then you can take some kind of reasonable measures to discourage people or at least uh, inform members of the public that are passing that this is a smoke-free entrance, as it were, um, and do it in an incremental basis like that. I, I, I think it's too woolly um, to embrace wholeheartedly. Um, and given the debate that we've had just about car parks and, and places where people can smoke, etc. I think we, we need to observe the policy in some way, and I think we need to find a practical way forward that lets us do that without having a blanket ban on all council property. I don't actually see the difference with that in the recommendations, because that's because it's entrances and pathways, but it's nothing to do with car parts. That was brought into the, the debate, but it hasn't actually anything to do with it. I don't know, I'll be corrected. That, that's correct, whether it's not actually focused on, on car parks because they have just a space that's adjacent to entrances. The incremental part of it, Stephen, but how do you mean by that? Okay, <clears throat> so it references walkways, etc., but it doesn't tightly enough specify, and I know you've said you'll revise the wording, but I think if the focus is doorways, um, whereas a public entrance, then that can be enforced amongst staff and managers and also discouraged from public who are at those doorways or approaching the doorways. But when you mention walkways and pathways, I think it's too general and vague, and it suggests that it actually covers paths all around and nearby, which might be in public realm anyway. So it sends out the wrong message, I think, to the members of the public. Chair, the, the mention of that was only where they actually connect an entrance. It was the direct space between the doorway and, and the, the access. Thanks, but I think we'd already established that there was a few revisions and clarifications in the wording from earlier that that needed, needed to be tightened up. So I think that's where I'm, as is, without those revisions, um, I'd rather amend it to reflect specifically that it's doorways and the paths associated okay, with the doorways. Okay, do you have a seconder? Okay, no, that's that's right. so you've got a counter amendment, an amendment and a motion. Okay, uh, members will proceed to the vote with the counter amendment uh, going against the amendment. The counter amendment being that proposed by Councillor Thompson uh, to restrict this to doorways, public entrances, um, and for it to be done on an incremental basis. Uh, and the amendment being to accept the recommendations as are in the report. Okay, so counter amendment. Against amendment. Leader. Deputy Leader. Amendment. Councillor Carruthers. Counter. Councillor Davidson. Amendment. Councillor Diggle. Councillor Dykes. Counter. Councillor Ferguson. Amendment. Councillor Gilroy. Councillor Hislop. Counter. 
Councillor Lever. Councillor Maitland. Amendment. Councillor Marshall. Amendment. Councillor McCautry. Amendment. Councillor McComb. Counter. Councillor Ogilvy. Amendment. Councillor Scobie. Councillor Thompson. Counter. Councillor Tuckfield. Counter. Oh dear. Is it just me? <laughs> it's always got to Yeah, we have a, a draw um, okay. again. Uh, so nine votes each. Right. I'll use my casting vote this time. Go for the amendment. Okay, thank you. So the amendment is carried by 10 votes to 9. We therefore now have the amendment, which is the recommendations as are in the report, against the motion, which is not to agree any of the recommendations in the report. Leader. Amendment. Deputy Leader. Amendment. Councillor Carruthers. Motion. Councillor Davidson. Amendment. Councillor Diggle. Councillor Dykes. Motion. Councillor Ferguson. Amendment. Councillor Gilroy. Councillor Hislop. Motion. Councillor Lever. Councillor Maitland. Amendment. Councillor Marshall. Amendment. Councillor McCautry. Amendment. Councillor McComb. Amendment. Councillor Ogilvie. Amendment. Councillor Scobie. Abstain. Councillor Thompson. <coughs> Abstain. Councillor Tuckfield. The amendment is carried uh, in this instance with two abstentions, uh, 10 for the amendment and 6 for the motion. Okay, moving on to item 7, which is uh, the land at Sundries Road. This council was committed to empower communities to make the most of their assets and the talent of people who live and work in our region. The report asks us to consider the lease of the former caravan site, Sundries Road, State for Dumfries, to Sandside Community Garden Project Association. This is for the purpose of the community garden. The lease would be for 10 years at a peppercorn rent. The Community Garden Project Association has indicated at paragraph 3.2 of this report the purpose and range of benefits that it is seeking to achieve through this lease. This matter has been considered by the Dumfries Common Good Fund Subcommittee and the subcommittee has recommended that we lease the land to the association. I think it's anybody that knows the land and I'm quite sure that um, you know, the, the local councillors do. It's a derelict piece of land that's actually used by drug dealers and you know, drug people that take drugs. There's needles, there's all that kind of stuff around about the area. So they're taking ownership of that part of the land and using it for community good and garden. Members? Over, then Andy. Chair, I'm happy for this to go ahead, but I, I did notice, I think, in one of the papers the other day that one of their funders has abandoned them or something. I didn't read the full story, but I was just wondering if it would still go ahead. I just wanted to get councillors on with that. Yeah. I think that's a, a misinformation that's been put out in the, the news. There's been no abandonment of that. Some people might, uh, you know, give false information to the press. Unfortunately, the press take that forward as fact, where it is not fact. The 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 application that this group made is coming up like every other group to the area committee. Andy? Um, thanks, Leader. Uh, like you, I know the area very well, and 
I mean, this is a dedicated group of local residents who are wanting to do something to improve their, their neighbourhood. Um, and in the meantime, Rid and Eyesore had been there since the, that land was used to, um, for decant purposes when they were upgrading all the houses down there. Um, and I think this whole thing should be amended, and I'd be happy just to move through the recommendations and agree it. Can we agree the recommendation? Okay. Okay, uh, no urgent business in item 8. Uh, moving on to item 9, can we agree to adopt the resolution 